Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crowley. I'm back with another video. This is number nine in my ongoing series of topic videos, videos in which I have a kind of virtual conversation with my YouTube viewers, uh, on a topic related to art or creativity in general. We've talked about art supplies, we've talked about, you know, uh, getting through artist's block, and uh, today we're going to be talking about talent. Are people born with talent? Uh, are people indeed born with limitations? Uh, to their abilities. And uh, finally, um, what is more important between art and perseverance? Those were the uh, three questions that set in motion, boy, like more than 2,000 comments people left, and so many of them just really fascinating, interesting points of view. Uh, sadly, I had to boil it all down to just 16 uh, that I chose, so my apologies if you, uh, um, you know, don't get your topics selected, but I did enjoy reading each and every one of them. As always, I like for you to have something to look at uh, while I'm doing one of these videos, so I'm going to be adding line work with a black Prismacolor, a trusty black Prismacolor, I might say, and, uh, to this illustration that I'm working on. And um, let's just go ahead then and get on to the first of the comments. The first five are going to be the people who are sort of minimizing talent. Uh, this one from Landon Walls. No, I don't think there is such a thing as talent as far as creativity is concerned. You don't come out of the womb knowing how to draw, sculpt, paint, sing, or what have you. Everything is learned. Uh, and this topic very much representative uh, of a certain point of view that I saw in lots of the comments, sort of um, uh, maybe dismissing the whole concept of talent and saying that it just um, people are not born with uh, certain abilities. It all comes down to learning and uh, you know effort uh, working at it. And so I wanted to get at least one in there that sort of you know quite simply stated, you know, refuted the very concept of people being born with certain talents. And we are going to come back to this idea of, you know, being born with a talent, whether, um, you know, they, they mentioned coming out of the womb. You know, I think certainly we don't have the idea that somebody came out of the womb able to draw pictures. Uh, it more has to do, I think, with uh, having a certain natural... Um, well, speed is what a lot of people said. You pick things up so quickly. Uh, when you seem to have talent, uh, and at a fairly young age. That uh, also seemed to be part of the definition. Anyway, let's move on to number two here. From uh, Brini, I think it's pronounced, Scott. I hate the idea that people are born with talent or are naturally gifted. I think it downplays the work that you do. Uh, definitely wanted to get this in there of um, representative of you know, this idea that some people are almost a little angry uh, or disappointed when they are told, oh, you're so talented or you have a gift, you know, that that, that very phrase seems to be minimizing the amount of work that they did to gain their abilities. Um, and so, yeah, it is interesting that uh, clearly people saying something like that, oh, you're so talented, you're, they're, they're, they, you know, they're trying to compliment you. They see it as praise. But uh, from some people's point of view, getting that type of praise comes off as a, as a sort of a limiting, you know, or dismissing the amount of work that was taken to get uh, to where you are. I also wanted to include that one because it includes this phrase, I hate the idea that people are born with talent. Uh, you know, let's hold on to that because that's going to come back later on. Um, that, you know, the, the concept of talent is something that people may be uneasy with, and I think, um, while it sort of affects the way you see the world, it actually has a lot of implications uh, that, again, we, we will get to later. But let's go ahead and move on to this one from Colorful Soul. I remember my mother and my older sister uh, talking about my love of drawing, and my sister said, how come my younger sibling has more talent than me? My mother's response was, they're not born with talent, they were born with the love of drawing. Um, this one, again, uh, very emblematic of a certain uh, point of view here, That, and I wanted to make sure I got this in here, that it's, uh, from some people's point of view, it's more about your love of this thing. You love it so much that you do it a lot and you gradually get better. Uh, so that was definitely something that came up a lot, this idea of um, 
and I agree with it, I must say, that uh, looking at, at my own progress in art, for example, I just loved doing it. And um, that, in a way, flies in the face of this idea of sacrifice and perseverance and pushing yourself so hard. I never felt like I was pushing myself that. I was just doing something that I loved doing. So it's sort of interesting to compare those um, two different concepts and how they, there's a certain tension between the two of them. Did you, did you indeed sacrifice or were you just doing something that you loved doing? Uh, in any case, that certainly was uh, something that came up in a lot of these uh, comments. Uh, and it does, you know, I don't think it has to be either or. I, I, I think, for me, it's hard to imagine someone getting really good at something that they're not interested in, that, that they, don't, they don't even enjoy. Right, that seems. I don't know if I've even heard of something like that happening. Do you get thing get good at things that you don't actually like at all? I suppose. You know, in the military or something, you may be forced to do some activity that you don't like, and just through sheer repetition, you get better. So yeah, I guess yeah. Now that <laughs> now that I think it through, um, you could get good at something that you don't actually like. But I think normally people get you know. People tend to excel at the things that they uh, enjoy at, on some fundamental level. Uh, people may be wondering about this illustration that I'm working in. I'll just sort of jump in here and say it's a little bit inspired from uh, The Force Awakens. Uh, and uh, Rey, the uh, sort of scavenger character, uh, going, she was going through the old junkyards and stuff and finding things. And I just loved, I loved that idea and I wanted, I wanted to do a, a uh, Illustration that was sort of reminiscent of that, only this time instead of a big spaceship, the guy's in a sort of vast junkyard of uh, futuristic <laughs> garbage, I suppose we'd have to call this. Anyway, that's what you're looking at here. And let's move on to the next comment. This one from Tyler Booth. I believe that people are not born with talent but raised with it. For example, if a child was born with artistic parents, then they will have a talent for that. Um, this one is interesting from my point of view because it, it doesn't really square with my own experience. My parents were not uh, artistic. I think they would agree with that, that it just was not something that they uh, excelled at, and, and yet I, um, and my brothers to a degree when they were younger, just loved drawing, and that, you know, it, you know it, I guess it, there's this idea of the apple doesn't fall very far from the tree, this, you know, the inherited talent or ability, uh, or indeed some people kept equating this conversation with nature versus nurture, uh, this idea that it's, that it's all about the this environmental, you know, as if it all comes down to your parents, really. If they encourage you, you'll get good. If they discourage you, you won't. Um, again, I, I don't know if that necessarily seems 100% um, airtight <laughs> in terms of my uh, experience. Not that my parents didn't encourage me, but we just hear so much about, you know, actors and so forth who were in a family where they were not encouraged at all, but that the talent was just in them and it was going to burst out one way or another. So I'm not sure that I think this uh, this idea of nature versus nurture applies so directly to the idea of talent. Certainly the nature part of it seems to, from some people's point of view, but this idea of nurturing uh, that, that it, from environmental factors alone, a person um, becomes talented that I'm not so sure. I remain unconvinced, let's put it that way. Let's move on then. I said there were five. Did I say five? There's five different comments that seem related to this idea of, of you know, doubting the value of talent or even the existence of this concept of talent. This one from Anime Monocle. Talent comes from starting something, like drawing, at a very young age. If you start at a young age, you'll be ahead of others' skill level and people will call you talented. I think there's certainly some truth to that. Um, generally speaking, the people who are really good at uh, certain skills did begin working at them when they were young. I don't think that that's a true 100% of the time, though, and people always give the example of uh, Vincent Van Gogh, who started relatively late in life. So I don't know if it's a prerequisite, but certainly holds true in my case. I was drawing from a very young age. 
Um, people often ask me, well, you know, how old were you when you started drawing? And I always say, well, I can't even remember. You know, every kid starts drawing uh, to some degree with crayons or whatever, and uh, some just stop while others continue. I saw that kind of a comment. It, di it didn't end up in any of the 16 uh, comments that I chose, but some people did indeed refer to that idea. Um, that uh, every kid draws, basically, and that some continue and some stop for whatever reason. Uh, that certainly seems to square with my experience. Um, but I do wonder if, if we could hear from people who didn't start when they were young, uh, who started a little older. And uh, indeed, that may come back as we talk about other aspects of this question. But for now, let us uh, pivot from uh, the first five, and we're going to move to the next six. You know what I think I'll do is I'll uh, I'll do a, f a little more line work here in time lapse, and then we will move on to the next five that uh, uh, come at this from a different point of view. Well, now we can turn to this next section of commenters, uh, most of whom are very much at home with the idea of there being talent and, and indeed uh, embracing it in, in a pretty matter-of-fact way. This one from Yura Tsuki. Talent is defined as a special natural ability or aptitude. So yes, you can be born with talent. DNA slash nature chooses what you are good at and what you are not. Uh, I wanted to start with this one because it has the definition, a special natural ability. Uh, and I think natural is the key word here. Sometimes I wondered if we were having problems with the semantics in this discussion in terms of what does the word talent mean. Uh, some people seem to be suggesting if you, uh, you know, if you work really hard at something for years and years and years, then you can um, sort of manufacture talent. And... Um, I thought, well, for sure, skill, you can uh, obtain skill, but I don't know if, if that's the meaning of the word talent, something that you, you know, were sort of swimming upstream and fighting and struggling to get hold of. I just, that's not what I think of as the definition of the word talent uh, in any case. Uh, <clears throat> this uh, person here, and, and a lot of people, you know, they, they, there was a lot of confidence in the answers. A lot, I saw the word of the words "of course" a lot. Uh, whether it was "of course" there is such a thing uh, as talent, or "of course" there is not such a thing as talent, people seemed very sure of themselves. Uh, and that one, anyway, really is sort of chalking it all up to DNA, genetics. It all comes down uh, to what you were born with. Um, I do not necessarily subscribe to that point of view, at least not completely. Uh, let's move on to number seven here from Chris Garcia. It's like if you're born ugly or pretty. Too bad or good for you, you were born with it. I wanted to get this one in here. Very straightforward, almost kind of brutal. You're born ugly or you're born pretty. There's nothing you can do about it uh, in terms of talent. I think it is interesting. There's sort of a, like a philosophical thing at work here where some people are very, uh, they have no problem with the idea that some people, that the, you know, that life is harsh and there are inequalities that uh, are, are dealt to you at birth, the sort of roll of the dice, uh, whereas other people, and we're going to come to this again later on, I think, um, sort of feel, boy, that it's so unfair. That idea just seems so unfair to me. Uh, in any case, I wanted to get both of these first two comments kind of unabashedly um, embracing the concept of some of us having it and some of us not having it right from the word go. Let's move on now to number eight from Reborn Designer. People love to think it's all hard work and perseverance, but it's not. Uh, I thought it was very important to get this one in here. People love to think that it's all hard work. I think there is a tendency of people wanting the world to be one way or, or another uh, in relation to this idea of fairness. Um, it does seem very unfair for one person to be born um, uh, predestined to attain greatness. Uh, and so 
they are more inclined, I think, to say, well, no, it all comes down to perseverance. That makes it more democratic. Then we can all get there. Uh, whereas other people, maybe, uh, as I was saying before, have just more of a um, black and white view of the world and have no problem um, uh, saying that, you know, some people have a head start. And that's just the way of the world. So uh, I thought, yeah, it was interesting. This people people love to think that it's all hard work, uh, but it's not. This person sort of bringing that in there and saying, you know, uh, it, it's unpleasant to contemplate the idea that you could work really hard and then still not be good at something. It sort of flies in the face of what we want to believe. It's not a very optimistic point of view, is it? Um, this one, number nine, from Protocurity. Of course people are born with talent. Heck, I myself am proficient at math, and every time someone asks me, how did you get so good at math, I honestly don't have an answer. I spend my time wondering how everyone is so bad at math. Um, this one, very interesting to me, and, and works nicely uh, from my point of view, because I am not particularly good at math, and I thought I would come up with, just for fun, a, a little addition problem here. For those of you who want to challenge yourselves to add a bunch of numbers in your head. I'm going to give you nine numbers right now. See if you can add them in your head. It's all simple addition. So here we go. What is 5 plus 7 plus 18 plus 23 plus 9 plus 52 plus 37 plus 5 plus 12? The answer is 168. And you can see <laughs> that I worked it all out in advance. Uh, if you were able to do that, and I'll be interested to see in the comments section how many people can honestly claim that they were able to add all those numbers in their head that quickly, I would say you have a talent for math or for numbers. Um, what I'm curious to know is if any of the people who were able to do that would claim that they gained that ability entirely by way of hard work and training, uh, and to what degree they would say, well, no, it, uh, uh, I just sort of, over time, because of my love of math, acquired the ability to add numbers. It's sort of a funny thing to me, because I think something like this is, to me, the equivalent of, uh, like, when I do a realism challenge video, and people look at it and say, whoa, how, how are you able to do that? Well, I have the exact same feeling in a way when I rattle off a bunch of numbers like I just did and if someone is able to like a human calculator uh, spit out the answer at the end of all that that to me is every bit as kind of mind-boggling I'm like really because for me by the third number I'm like whoa whoa slow down <laughs> does anybody have an abacus <laughs> so help me out here you know because I just um, yeah my brain does not relate to numbers that way. And I suppose, if I wanted to, I guess I could train myself to acquire that uh, ability. I mean, it's funny, because we're talking about simple addition here. I, I have to wonder if the people who are really into math are just sort of chuckling to themselves and say, dude, you didn't, <laughs> you didn't even include subtraction, much less division. Uh, how easy can, it, can you make it, you know? But again, for me, not easy at all. So uh, there you go. That one, though, to get back to the original comment, because I think I sort of skipped by it, uh, I thought it was interesting that Protocurity here uh, was, in a way, very cheerfully saying, I didn't work hard to gain this ability. I was born with it. Uh, and uh, that, I think, is, is somewhat unusual. People tend to want to say, hey, look, I didn't just get all this as a gift. I had to work for it. Uh, so I thought that was, you know, I admire the honesty of this person um, uh, claiming that they really didn't have to work at all to uh, be that good. Let us move on to number 10. From uh, Tranquil Escapism. As a working musician, I have met a lot of people in the trade. I am quite certain that some people are born with talent. I've met many musicians, and I don't mean savants, who never really studied or put a lot of effort into practicing, yet had an amazing ear and comfortableness with an instrument. Uh, so I liked this one because it's very specific. It's talking about actual, you know, he's actually encountered people like this. that, um, and, and that is what brought him to this conclusion 
that uh, there is such a thing as talent. And it's sort of like I've seen it with my own eyes. This isn't just my uh, the way I want to see the world. This is the world uh, as it has shown itself to me by way of specific examples. So uh, I thought that was interesting. And I think within the world of music, there certainly is this idea of you know like being tone deaf, for example. Uh, can a tone deaf person uh, learn to play the violin if they can't hear the differences between those notes? I'm not sure, uh, but uh, that's uh, that's another one again specific to to music. But I think probably in a lot of different areas, you you could find such testimonials of people saying, "Oh, I've seen I've seen people who are just they got it naturally. They're just good at it without even trying, seemingly." Um, let's move on now to uh, a new set of comments. That was the, I did five in the there is no talent area and five in the of course there is talent. Um, this one we move to uh, talking about perseverance. And Kaylee Brown here says, Perseverance is amazing. Someone who's born talented gets an easy advantage, but someone who starts off untalented or unskilled gets more credit and admiration in the end. I thought this was sort of interesting, this idea that, uh, in a way, the person who has to triumph over uh, a seeming lack of talent has a, a kind of a narrative to their life uh, of triumphing against adversity. Uh, that the person who was born with it doesn't have. Sort of uh, an interesting point of view. Um, and uh, I don't know, in, in a funny way, I get uneasy about someone, you know, uh, being able to get admiration. I'm winning admiration. It's all about getting admiration. Uh, I don't think they meant it to, to come across that way. But uh, in any case, certainly there is there is drama in the story of someone who was... You know, born weak. Uh, I think don't they say that Teddy Roosevelt was like that, very sickly as a child, and then as he he just trained himself and became this very athletic person against the odds. There's certainly drama there, uh, in a way uh, that I think human beings find inspirational and and uh, love to hear about uh, more so than this idea of the person who just had it from the beginning. Here we go with Chad M. I was blessed with incredible uh, physical genetics and had the potential to achieve um, a very successful sports career. I was the best without going to practice through my entire adolescence and young adult life. Very suddenly, I wasn't the best anymore, not even close. It crushed me and I gave up. These people were not more talented. They tried harder. They had more drive. So again, I love this sort of specifics of this, a personal experience of someone who was uh, apparently born with great talent, but they didn't work hard enough, and they were su surpassed by the people who uh, had more drive. Almost like the story of the tortoise and the hare, uh, that the, uh, you know, getting a little too cocky, you know, having these natural abilities, and then uh, other people pass you by. Um, Certainly, uh, that in itself becomes a narrative that we find fascinating, uh, and it supports that idea of you know perseverance, perseverance being more important um, than genetics. And uh, you know, I sort of alluded to this earlier. There is this, I think, there is this feeling of unfairness uh, with the idea of being born a certain way. And I do wonder if it's not a product of our modern world in which, you know, democracy is, you know, pretty universally uh, admired and thought of uh, as a good thing. I certainly <laughs> feel it's a good thing, but uh, it flies in the face of democracy, this idea of being born with talent. Uh, that is more of what we might associate with uh, sort of elitism. Uh, and, and I wonder if you went back to the old days, if you went back several centuries, to a time when you know monarchy was the norm, uh, or feudalism, and, uh, uh, or caste systems were very rigidly in place. I wonder if those people would have been much more at home with the idea of um, you know certain people being born with uh, talent, inheriting almost by way of bloodline. Uh, talent, which I have to say seems uh, again not something that I can agree with. Yes, we can find examples of, um, you know, the 
the son or daughter of a great musician ends up also becoming a great musician. But we can find just as many, if not more, examples of it not being even remotely hereditary. Uh, so, in any case, I thought it was sort of interesting that, that it, there could be a sort of a historical change of perspective on this idea uh, in the sense of it coming across as undemocratic in a way, and we don't want life to be like that. It really gets into some pretty deep philosophical, you know, ways of viewing the world. And I can imagine heated debates on this subject between people who don't like the unfairness of uh, people being born with certain abilities and other people who are kind of eager to throw cold water of reality on that and say, look, man, life is tough. It's not easy. You know, I, I feel like the, there's, um, there's two different ph philosophies at work here. And it sort of says a lot about you, maybe, depending on which um, point of view you have. We're getting closer to the end here, folks. Uh, I'm going to move on to one at least where I had talked about, you know, it, it, could you be born with a, a, a body that limits your abilities? Um, sometimes I hear from people who have like a shaky hand, you know, and they're like, I can't draw because my hand is too shaky. Well, that's a sort of a physical, you know, limitation that they were born with. Uh, and, you know, it's not the subject of this video, I think maybe for a future one, I, I would like to show that it is possible to make good art even with very shaky lines. Uh, but again, we'll have to sort of uh, stick a pin in that and save that for some other video. Uh, but uh, in any case, uh, let's move on to this one that is sort of dealing with that concept of physical limitations, this one from Cheerios. I can tell you that having ADD doesn't define me or others who struggle with mental or physical disorders. With hard work, focus, humility, and determination, anyone can rise, uh, even if they're deemed as being limited. Sorry, I got the <laughs> there. I messed up on that one. But in any case, um, yes, this one very inspirational, and uh, it does. You know, I think there's a lot of truth to that. That uh, you you don't. You don't have to allow your physical limitations to define you. And there's so many, you know, greatly inspirational uh, stories of people uh, triumphing over the, the physical abil uh, inabilities that they happen to be born with. Um, and in a way, I think all of these uh, comments that I brought in here towards the end tend to be on the side of, of this sort of more inspirational optimistic point of view. It, it is sort of <laughs> just sort of depressing to, to let's leave it with the idea that no, you're born with what you're born with and that's it. There's nothing can be done. You know, uh, that the, any way you look at it, that it's not super inspirational, um, to dwell on that point of view for very long. Let's uh, move on to a series of quotations, three quotations that are going to end this video here. Uh, and in a way, I have to credit the, per the people who pointed me towards these quotations, but of course we have to credit the quotation to the original person who said it. This one, uh, Riss Y, um, pointed me towards a quote from Jacques Thelemac, who is a filmmaker. Thelemac? I'm not really sure about the pronunciation there, but he said, What true filmmakers have in common can be summed up in four words. Passion, focus, commitment, and resiliency. Uh, despite the common view that talent is either in you or not, I've seen the, the work of a lot of filmmakers mature in ways that I would never have imagined uh, through their passion, focus, commitment, and resiliency. Um, I thought that was interesting the way they, he breaks it down into these four words. And I was just talking about, what did I say, perseverance. But I believe he's sort of breaking it into four different words, passion, uh, sort of your enthusiasm for it. Focus, staying focused, not being diverted from your goal. Commitment, that's more maybe like my perseverance. Uh, resiliency, uh, which I kind of feel like you, you get knocked down, you get back up again. Uh, so I thought those four words interesting. Uh, and thanks again to Riss Y for pointing to me toward this quote that I certainly had never seen before. Um, and uh, these next two also quotations... Tim uh, Trowers pointing me towards a Bob Ross quote. I think Bob Ross said it best. When I am asked how long a picture takes, I reply 30 years and one half hour. It took many years to get to that level and a half hour to paint it. Uh, yeah, wonderful quotation. And I had not heard that before. It actually reminds me a little 
of uh, an old quote from uh, James McNeil Whistler, who was sort of accused of asking too much money uh, for a painting that had only taken him two days. And he said, yeah, well, it, you know, it's, I'm not asking the money for the two days, I'm asking it for the, the lifetime of experience that uh, allowed me to make such a painting. Um, so, and, I'm, and I wonder if Bob Ross, I wonder if old Bob <laughs> was familiar with that uh, James McNeil Whistler quote, because it's sort of similar and be, would be interesting if he had sort of adapted it to his own purposes. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish up the line work in time lapse, because I know people really don't like it when I <laughs> end one of these without having finished the line work. So let me go ahead and do that in time lapse, and then we'll be back with uh, number 16, the final uh, comment in this video. All right, well, hopefully that's done enough uh, to satisfy people as they um, watched this uh, line work process that I was doing throughout this video. Uh, I want to move on to the final uh, comment, which is an, uh, indeed another one of these quotations, and I chose it as the last one because I sort of like its point of view, and I, it's, I thought it would be a good thing to leave you with. This one from William Anis. My favorite comment on this topic is by the comedian Steve Martin, who in this case is speaking about the banjo. Obsession is a great substitute for talent. Uh, I love that. I had never heard that quote. Thank you so much uh, for sharing that with me. I think that's a great quotation. We always hear people saying practice makes perfect, um, and it does, but uh, in a way I feel like that is sort of a weak <laughs> phrase that doesn't mean anything to anyone anymore. Uh, whereas I think this idea of obsession, becoming obsessed with something, uh, in my experience, is is an, an, an important ingredient in getting better at it. Um, it's not so much that you're, you're kind of into it or you dig it a little bit and you're like, yeah, every once in a while. No, no, you're obsessed with it. You're doing it all the time. You're constantly uh, working at this thing that is endlessly fascinating to you, and that is how you get better at it. Certainly, you know, I would give like language as an example. When I went to Taiwan, uh, I became very focused with learning Mandarin Chinese. I was almost kind of uh, obsessed with it. I was working at it all day long. I was writing down wor every word that I learned. I made sure I wouldn't forget. And um, by the end of that process, I became convinced that, you know, that's how you do it. That's how you get good at something. You get super, super focused on it. And interestingly, I was thinking about how these days, you know, we talk about the rise of geek culture uh, and how the word nerd is not, uh, you know, the uh, sort of put down that it used to be. And I think in a way, um, one of the hallmarks of being a, a geek or being nerdy about something is you're really into it. You're totally into it. You go to conventions related to it, you know. Uh, and in a way, I think the current generation ideally doesn't feel the same stigma that maybe previous ones did about being super, super into something. And I think that's great because, that, uh, as I just said, that's, that's part of how you get good at something, by becoming a little obsessed. Of course, you can cross the line and become so into something that it gets a little scary. Uh, but uh, short of that, I do think it's a great recipe for... Uh, getting good at something over a relatively short period of time. So yes, thank you uh, William and Steve Martin for that uh, quotation about the benefits of obsession. But that kind of brings us to the end of this video. It's going to be one of the longer ones, I'm sure, and uh, so big thanks to those of you who stuck with me all the way through uh, to the end, and thanks so much for posting all these really thoughtful, wonderful uh, comments. As I have said in the past, I really do feel like uh, this is kind of YouTube at its best. People think that YouTube all comes down to cat videos and fart jokes. Uh, 
And there are plenty of both of those, let's be honest. But uh, it also includes videos like this, where people are, you know, talking about interesting topics and um, really getting almost kind of intellectual a little bit. Um, uh, so uh, many thanks to all of you who supplied the comments and to all of you who, who just watched it all the way through. But I think it's time for me to lay down this pencil. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you liked it. And we'll be back with another one real soon.